Yeah, I think what brings the best out of me is always that pressure. And I, I think I do need the pressure to be able to perform. I think the overriding factor for me is her mental toughness to just keep going. I mean, the pressure as, you know, as a defending champion, well, I'm actually not defending it this time, so I feel less pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so today we're going to the Val Rosec. Yeah, I do it in winter for cross-country ski, and now it's, uh, yeah, we have the river and just cruising along, getting some longer runs done, getting the miles done for Kona. I did my first triathlon, I think around 12, I, uh, in, yeah, just in the neighborhood. And then I did uh, start to love the sport. Um, I went to a, a youth camp um, a few, maybe a year later. I definitely was always a competitive person. Um, I, I don't know, it just seemed natural to me. Um, I wanted, if I did something, I, I enjoyed it more when I was good at it. And, Obviously, I, I saw that I had talent um, in the in triathlon, and therefore was very motivated to also, you know, push it. My family comes from a sporty and active background. My my dad was a mountain climber and had um, did a lot of tours, um, trekking tours, and on, over glaciers or in, in uh, also in Africa. My mom, she she ran for fun. Um, she did marathon and. She was definitely the one who also got me into the sports very early. On the way to Kona, we did the 70.3 Worlds um, in Mont Tremblant. I took my mom with me. I still remember she, um, I asked her to give me splits and she was so nervous. It was still nice because she never went outside of um, Europe. So for her, it was the first time actually to go overseas as well. And um, yeah, it was definitely nice to have her um, there with me. The team is still quite small. I, I still like it quality before quantity. Miranda was like the big star. She was, she was like the, the defender, defending um, champion. And I was this young kid just kind of coming and thinking I can do whatever. Going into 2014, Miranda Carfrey was defending champion. She had won in 2010 and she had won in 2013. And then there was this brand new person, Daniela Reef from Switzerland, who was coming to Kona for the very first time. Yeah, Daniela was definitely on my radar going into 2014. I knew that she would be one to watch and uh, definitely was high on my list of athletes to, to watch out for and, and sort of key off of during the race. I went out there and just really went for it. I, I didn't hold back and even I was young and the newbie, I, I'm quite still very proud of that performance because I, I just went for it on the bike. I didn't really, yeah, even I was scared. I didn't really care. I just tried to go hard. She wasn't intimidated by the moment. She wasn't intimidated by the athletes. She probably had no idea who most of these athletes were. She really hadn't raced that much. It was like K30 and really, really struggling. And Miranda caught me, I think the last five Ks in the run. And that was definitely a very, yeah, it's a moment that was uh, career changing because even though I was super, I was happy with my performance, I was definitely not so happy with second because of course I saw what was possible. Yeah, I mean, having, losing to Miranda was definitely also very motivating and I, that I remember coming home from that from Kona I started to realize I'm I can actually win this race and I I, I knew it was not that I was not that far away and uh, that really gave me the motivation to work very hard for the next year I told her that I feel like she helped me to to be become a better athlete and also showing me what's possible in the run because I mean there she really she really set the standards there and I kind of saw through her performances what's possible and also started to work on my run and 
not managed yet to be that fast, but maybe this year um, with, with the help of fast shoes, I, I might be able to come up to her, um, to her times. That would be definitely a goal. She had won 70.3 World Championship and she had gotten second to Ironman World Championship and was announcing to the world, Danielle Arif is going to be somebody to watch. I never thought of doing Ironman and to me I always, I never thought it would be, I, I, to me it felt like way too long. I, I didn't have the confidence to actually try it and there I realized like it's good to have, uh, I mean back then having the coach kind of pushing me to do something I didn't think I was able to do it um, really helped me and yeah that's where pretty much my second career started. Feeling free is one of the most important things for me. For example, running makes me feel free. Going up on a mountain, having a view <laughs> makes me feel free. If I feel like too intense or too much pressure, I can't really think freely. And I think sport can really help having that feel of freedom. And I'm very lucky. I mean, I can make my decisions freely. I don't depend on, on anyone. That's definitely a, a huge luxury for um, to be able to pretty much do with your life what you want. I definitely have two sides and I feel like in my free time I'm definitely much more relaxed. I definitely feel like I live the best life I can uh, and then I have the sport life which is also the best life but still I yeah I have that I think it's that expectation on myself where I also know it it is a job in terms of I want to be good at it. For me it's always that challenge to find the balance. The winning is is nice but it's for me it's more satisfying if I have that performance. As a athlete's perspective of course I, I love to be able to just get that maximum out of myself.